I said, listen, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know how I'm going to do it. But part of it is going to entail me coming back to Tennessee to try to make a difference. And so what I want to talk to you about now in the next 10 to 15 minutes is sort of health care uh, and health care reform and, and why you should, uh, you should uh, care. Can you uh, pull up the uh, PowerPoint? And if not, we can just talk about this. Uh, perfect. All right. So the name of my talk is Why It Matters, Healthcare Reform in the Future of Our State and Our Nation. Okay? So I, I have really bad ADD. So I like to just kind of get things out there and do it fast. So 15 minutes, what are we going to talk about? The, the sort of where is national health care, what's happening, um, the problems that we face, some of the reforms that are going on and why you, you should uh, kind of pay attention to that. Specifically, the issues that we face right here at home in Tennessee. Um, again, why you should care and the pathway forward. All right. So if you're in the sixth grade or the eighth grade or the ninth grade, why should you listen to me right now? I mean, if I were you, I'd be back there being like, oh, God, okay, you know. I'd be, you know, playing on my phone or doing whatever. But here's why you should, you should care. Look at the number on the left. Look at the number on the right. $12.3 trillion. $14.2 trillion. This is the deficit as of last year, all right? $14 trillion. I want you to think about that. That may, it's not going to be a problem for Mr. Rice or Mr. Smith. It's not going to be a problem for me. I won't be long gone. It's going to be a problem for you. Because you're going to have to pay this down as a nation when you are the leaders of, of, of this country. So when you're a senior, you guys are seniors, yes? Okay, all right. Um, just making sure you're not going um, all right, so the gross domestic product, somebody, what is the gross domestic product? Somebody tell me, just, just define it. The amount of wealth produced by nations. There you go. <laughs> all right, so basically it's everything that a nation produces, right? Gross domestic product. But the problem is debt, all right? And right now what's happening in our country is that debt is becoming a lot of what we produce, frankly. And look at Greece. So are you aware of what's happening in Greece right now? No. Yes, no, maybe so. So in Greece, what's happening is, is that the national debt is rising so high that they can't pay it off. So essentially what's happening is, is a lot of the services that the government is, is providing, etc., they can't do anymore. Unemployment rates are rising. So there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of turmoil. Their currency is in trouble, etc. And it all stems from the debt versus the GDP. All right, so that's Greece, okay? This is where we are today. We're at about 20, you know, something percent. Look at what's gonna happen when you are in the workforce in 2020, in 2025. Do you see a similarity between the United States and Greece? Yes, right? So if we continue at the current pace that we are on with our national debt, we are going to find ourselves much like other countries in the world that are debt-ridden. And how can we do that? How can we maintain our superpower status in the world if our debt is as high as it is? The bottom line, in my opinion, we can't. And again, that doesn't affect me so much. It affects you. All right. So the American dream. I'm a believer because I'm a product of it. My parents were immigrants. They came from New Delhi, India. When I, when I was like in the eighth grade, I remember, once I got into this argument with my dad because I wanted like a, back then it was like a CD player, like a Discman. And I was like, yeah, I want a Discman. But my dad was really hardcore, man. You just, he was like, you know, he really wanted to bring me up in a very simplistic way. He's like, no, you can't have this. I'm like, dad, it's like a hundred bucks. Like, what's the problem? So, you know, he's like, oh, this kid, he doesn't understand basic values. So he took me to India. So he started taking me to India every year. And we wouldn't stay at like the Holiday Inn or like, you know, any like, you know, hotel. We'd stay old school where he used to live, like in the ghettos. So in this house that he lived in, literally, there were like three rooms surrounded by this roof that was wide open, open to the sky. And it would get, it would be like 20 degrees in the winter, right? But there were no space heaters. So my brother and I, who was, who also graduated from here, we were like trying to battle it out for like the blankets, like who would get blankets, etc. You take that on one scenario to what, what happened over time and what evolved. You know, they left everything they knew to come to the United States. You know, we were brought up here and born here. And we had these opportunities to come to places like Web, to become doctors. You know, that is the American dream. But when we're faced with $16 trillion of debt and it's rising, 
and that blue line that I just showed you showed you is rising. How how is that sustainable? How can we how can you know people of today have the opportunities that I had? Right? I think it's it's sort of questionable. So what is sort of one major issue of the deficit? You know, there, there are many, but I would argue and have long felt that healthcare is a major problem, okay? And, and some facts. So 20% of our GDP, GDP is what, one more time? Okay, yes, our amount of wealth produced. What, basically what we produce. 20% of what we do, one out of five dollars is healthcare. It's me last night fixing, you know, a poor smash guy who got ejected from a car. Or it's, you know, someone, you know, getting primary care. It's not like a, it's not like making steel or making goods. It's, it's healthcare. It's a service. The problem is, is that, is that the costs continue to rise, but not the quality, right? So it's like, imagine if, you know, you got, you know, you bought like this iPod, right? And it's like the iPod or the iPhone. It's the iPhone 4 versus the iPhone 3, right? But they're the same cost. You know, you're buying, you know, that makes, if you're going to pay more, you should get more. So if I'm going to pay, like, a higher premium, the quality of care should be better. But in the United States, that's a problem because our costs are going up, but the quality of care, meaning that, you know, how well patients do, you know, are they happy with the care, are they healthy, there's no match. So our costs are just kind of blindly rising, and, 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 and you know, that's a problem, and we'll talk more about that. We have the largest number of uninsured patients in our history. Do you guys understand, like, just the basic thing of what health insurance is? Yes, no, maybe so? Okay, uh, excellent. You guys are, are better than my Vanderbilt friend. Um, all right, so, you know, we have the largest number of uninsured patients in our history. All along the line, I want you to keep this in mind. The deficit is rising. Okay. So what does this mean? I, I want to talk first about an individual level, okay? Your mom and dad. What does this mean to them? And then talk about it on a national level. What does it mean to all of us? So look at this line. You see how it's kind of going up? And look here. Okay, so this is the cost per person in the United States for health care. In, in, in the 1990s, early 90s, it's like 2500 right? You come back to 2010, 2012, and it's escalating to like $10,000, $12,000. So it's going up. What that means is, is that your mom and dad, to get you health insurance for a family of four, have to pay around $10,000 right now. When my mom and dad, you know, 15 years ago, had to pay $4,000. So $4,000 then, $10,000 now. Clear problem. Why is that a clear problem? Well, look at this line. This line is basically like how healthcare insurance is, you know, getting more expensive. This orange line is what your parents make, what I make. Okay, look, that hasn't changed that much, right? Salaries across the United States haven't changed that much. But this has changed a lot. So every year, more and more money is coming out of your parents' wallets, my, my wallet, to pay for healthcare, meaning that we're saving less. We're using credit cards more. It's putting a little more sort of stress on our, on our financial system. What is, okay, so that's an individual level, all right? So what does this mean as a nation, all right? So this is kind of a pie chart. It's a very basic pie chart broken down into government spending, okay? So everything in 1966, for example, in the red, we spent 1% on health care, okay? 1% of all of our stuff was on health care. 20 years later, what do you think we spent? Throw out a number, percentage. 15 percent. Close. 10 percent. 1986. Okay, 10 percent. 20 years later, in 2006, how much did we spend? 20, 20, 20. Great. 20 percent. So if you go from 1 percent in 20 years to 10 percent, 20 years later, 19 percent. Do you see how this is like kind of growing? Like it's just, it, it's just ballooning. And, and, and keep it. It's both on an individual level, but then as a country. So why is this important? Okay, example, this is 2010. I'd have found 2011, but I got out of the ORLA last night. All right, so $3.5 trillion is what we spent last, in 2010. $3.5 trillion. All right, what we took in was $2.2 trillion, okay? Through tax revenue, through the different ways that the government makes money. $2.2 trillion, but we spent $3.5 trillion, all right? 
That's a problem. So why is that a problem? What is the answer to that question? All right, $1.3 trillion, okay, was what we added to the deficit in 2010, right? 40% of that is borrowed money. Again, it ain't going to be my problem. It ain't going to be their problem. Sorry, my wife told me not to say ain't, but I, I'm sorry, I apologize. But, you know, it's going to be your problem. 40% of that figure is what we borrow every year. And we're just leveraging your life away. So I believe that one way to tackle what's happening in America right now is healthcare costs. Is that if we can really, really stem that tide, we can change what's happening. So just a little sort of education about what's going on. So President Obama passed the 2010 Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act. Some people call this Obamacare. Don't, don't say that in public circles, because that's a very political statement, Obamacare. It's the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act. Have you guys heard of this? Yes? OK. So what did it do? Or what, did it, what does it attempt to do, rather? Right? Um, make health insurance affordable. Uh, increase state funding for patients who can't afford health insurance, right? So that's called Medicaid. If, you know, someone is, you know, can't get insurance or get care, the state will pay for them. And this, and this sort of tries to do that. Preventative medicine, things like, hey, stop smoking, um, lose weight, uh, diabetes. Are you aware of what diabetes is? Okay. <laughs> diabetes is, is a major problem, right? I don't know. I didn't know what diabetes was on the seventh grade. Um, you know, diabetes is a major problem and causes major health care issues. And so if we can hit that off at the pass uh, by doing preventative measures, we can reduce health care costs. And finally, making health care just more efficient. Not when you go to your doctor, you've got to repeat like 50 things. It's in some sort of electronic medical record, etc. All right? So will this work? The answers, I think, are very politically charged. On the right, uh, I think this is so funny. On the right, <laughs> You have people saying, look, um, it won't work. On the left, the Democrat side, you, you have people saying it will work. But I do think that what it, you know, it's based on your belief in government. If you believe that government is the answer to problems, and it's not a bad thing, then, you know, that it will work. If you believe that the private sector, meaning, you know, non-government, the individual can solve this, then, you know, you probably will, will think that it won't work. So it just depends. All right. So that's what's going on in a nation. In the last five minutes, I want to talk to you about what's going on in Tennessee. All right. So in 2004, I believe now it's the last sort of year that we have some of this data, we spent $32 billion on health care. $32 billion. Let that soak in for a moment. $32 billion. Gross state product is much like gross domestic product. It's everything that we produce as a state, right? So we spent 15.6% of everything we did on health care, okay? 15%. That's $5,500 for everybody in this, each person in this room. Uh, really, it's more like 6,000 now, the current figure. In 2006, remember that like sort of national average I showed you? So in Tennessee, uh, the average employer-based family premium for health care was $10,000 in 2006 versus half of that 10 years before. So $10,000, $5,000. So remember that curve. It continues to go up. Our deficit continues to go up. And at the current pace, by 2016, it will be $16,000 for a family of four. Okay? Just think about that. And why is that a problem? Well... How are we going to pay for this? This is specifically Tennessee data. So our premiums are projected to rise by 83%. Okay? So you, you may say, well, not a big deal. It doesn't matter. But if you look at what is coming in and out of your pocket, by 2016, 50%, one out of every $2 that your mom and dad spend will be on health care. Think about that. 50%. If we continue at the current rate. So we cannot continue at the current rate. Uh, so, you know, I put a lot of facts out at you. Why is this happening? Well, specifically in Tennessee, and for a lot of places around the country, a, a lot of people don't have health insurance. About 32% in Tennessee, more like 2 million people don't have health insurance. 
And can you understand how if you don't have health insurance and you're going to go and, and pay for health care, you're just not going to do it unless you absolutely have to, right? Why would you do that? It's like going to the dentist. Um, but think about if you have diabetes or if you have a major health care problem and you hold out, you hold out to the last minute, I'm not going to go to the doctor, I can't pay these bills, I don't want to pay these bills. But you go when your kidneys are failing, when your liver is failing. Can you understand how that's going to cost the system more money than if you'd just gone in the beginning and we could have counseled you on diabetes, we could have counseled you on not smoking, etc. Does that make does that make sense to you? Yeah. Okay. Um, there's something in Tennessee called a hidden tax. Okay. For every person you pay nine hundred dollars, nine hundred dollars. Each of you in this room pay nine hundred dollars for each person who doesn't have health insurance. And it's not like somebody who doesn't have health insurance is like a bad person. I'm a trauma surgeon. 90% of my patients don't have health insurance because you know they're, they're, they're working jobs where they don't, they're not offered those benefits. And so we have to find another way to help, the, help these patients and to, and to really provide insurance. And we'll talk a, bit, a little bit about that. So just 10 care, I, you know, you're going to hear that phrase a lot, 10 care. What does that mean? That is our way of trying to cover patients who really can't pay for insurance themselves through, through Medicaid. Uh, but if you just look, the budget went from two million, two billion to eight billion over a span of ten years. So that again continues to rise. So we have to figure out another way uh, to sort of one cover uninsured patients, but two really make the cost of care a little cheaper. And we need to cut patients from from ten care to make it cheaper. But it's it's really not has not helped that much. Okay. But the bottom line is this. Okay. Bottom line is this, or like the bottom line is that. Um, it's really that if we are going to pay this much for health care for your generation, how are we going to compete in education in the world? Now, you, like me, were privileged to go to this school and to get what I would say is the world's best education, right? But what about if your parents can't afford a place like WEP, or that if, you know, you, you know, scholarship didn't provide, etc., and you just couldn't come here, and you had to go to public schools. How are you in this room going to compete with, you know, the people in India or the people in China? That is the way we're going to have to compete, is our education systems are going to have to be equal. We're going to have to be better. We're going to have to be smarter and work harder. But how are we going to do that if we're paying all of our money for health care? We can't, right? It's not sustainable. How are we going to build the bridges and the roads and the tunnels and the factories you know, to, to get this country running again. We can't if we're paying so much for health care. So for Tennessee to do what we need to do, we have to invest in these two things. We have to reduce the cost of health care. It's very simple. So, you know, I've offered you a lot of problems. What is the, the basic way forward? So I think we need to really figure out this whole uninsured patient number. How many uninsured patients do we have in Tennessee? Because believe it or not, nobody really knows. Can we do it for cheap? Can we do it for cheaper? That has got to be the slogan. You know, it, it is getting, remember, if you are, you know, if cost goes up, quality should go up. If quality is not going up, then you shouldn't be paying more. And we should not be paying what we're paying for health care. So that's, that's one thing. But who should pay? That's what we have to decide. Who should pay? Should I pay for, you know, the, uh, an uninsured patient? Should the government pay? Who should pay? And I think that it's very important. And one sort of interesting thing that's coming about in Tennessee, and I've, I've had some input in this, is healthcare insurance exchanges. Uh, you know, that's going to really be this way you can read about that. It will make health insurance potentially cheaper because it will it will provide competition. So health insurance exchanges. We can't talk about it today, but maybe another time. But the key is, is that I think your your future really depends on this whole deficit issue, and part of that is healthcare costs. So. Finally, I, you know, it's a lot of gloom and doom, you know, listen, the deficit, the deficit. But, you know, the people in this room, the teachers in this room, when I was here, and I'm sure it hasn't changed for you, really injected me with the notion that I could change the world, that I could do whatever it is that I set out to do. And whether it was, you know, Bill Rice telling me, listen, man, you can solve this electron thing, and I'd be like, oh, my God, this is awful. Or, you know, or Mr. Smith, or, you know, or... Ms. Williams or Ms. Truitt or anybody who's here, or, or Mr. Nicholson, you know, anybody who's here, you know, you can change the world and you can make a difference. You know, right now there's a presidential election, get involved on either side, you know, you know, send flyers, make phone calls, write your congressman, get involved, know the issues. 
But, you know, I believe that Tennessee's best days are ahead, America's best days are ahead, but, you know, you guys here in this room are the leaders of the future, and you can make a difference, and you can make change. But use your time at Web now, like I did, to develop your strengths, work on your weaknesses, and know that the teachers here and the faculty, they care about you and love you so much. And, you know, and, and that's the key. So thank you very much. I really appreciate it.